What's up guys, Anbuf here. Welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. Now in today's video, we're talking about street photography and the tips that you can use to make your street photography game even, even better. Now for this video, we specially went out to the streets of Old Delhi towards places like Chani Chowk and I really tried to capture uh, the Indian essence of spices and essentially a lot of warm tones. So let me know if you guys like the pictures, let me know if you guys like the tips and without any further ado, drop a like, subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah, let's get started. Alright guys, so the first tip that I would like to give you guys is about having your gear in the right settings and also having the right gear. So having the right gear is essential to street photography because you're not going to have a lot of time in street photography while you're actually doing it to make sure you have the right lens on or the right settings on and to make sure that problems don't occur it's always good to set these settings beforehand and also know the gear that you're going to be using now for me that was my trusted camera the camera that is rolling right now the sony a6300 now i use this camera for essentially everything and i've been using it for a long time so i made sure that i had the correct choice of lens with me now as far as street photography is concerned i would recommend going with a prime lens either a 35 mm or a 50 mm prime is really going to help you you know force you to move into situations where you don't really uh, can zoom in or zoom out a lot and it's going to help you exercise and it's going to help you find spots that other people normally wouldn't if you had a zoom lens also the f1.8 makes sure you get some crisp shallow bokeh and uh, that depth of field is something that you can play with to bring in a lot of other elements to make your picture that much better so make sure you have the right gear and once you have that figured out make sure that uh, the settings that your camera or your phone is on is also accurate so you can you know figure out the aperture the ISO the shutter speed and the um, you know the overall exposure of the picture to find out something uh, some format that works well for you something that I've realized works really well for me is that if you're going to be going on a shoot on an early day you can set your ISO to be as low as possible and then you can toggle the aperture or the shutter speed to make sure that your photo is exposed so make sure your gear is in the right place and has the right settings on it and I'm sure your job of street photography will be that much easier. All right guys, the second tip that I want to give you guys is the fact that time is of the essence in street photography. Frames that you see a particular second that are happening right in front of you will not remain like that for the rest of time. You only have that little amount of time to capture that frame and then it's gone forever. It's never gonna happen the exact same way ever again. Now for this reason, you wanna make sure that you're super alert and you're super proactive when it comes to street photography. Uh, you wanna make sure that your camera is mostly always on, especially uh, when you know you're gonna encounter important frames. And you wanna make sure your settings are on point, which brings me back to my first point. And that is make sure your shutter speed is actually high. So somewhere around, around 600, 700, or even somewhere above 120 really makes sure that the photo is exposed and B also helps you capture frames super, super fast. So you can capture people walking, you can capture quick movements without any problems. You're not gonna get any motion blur when it comes to those things. Or you could just go completely reverse and you know have a very long shutter speed in case you wanna capture light trails and stuff like that. But these situations did not present my time in the streets when I was clicking all the pictures that you're seeing right now. So I just went with a really, really fast shutter speed to make sure I'm very ready wherever I see a frame and I can capture it whenever I want. So time is of the essence. Do not waste time doing anything other than clicking pictures, especially when you're out there, because trust me, you're going to see frames that you wouldn't want to miss if you, in case you just didn't click them. So yeah, time is of the essence. Remember that. All right, guys, the third tip that we're talking about is very crucial to street photography because it encounters the time of the day that you're going to shoot. So so you can shoot street anytime, right? You can shoot it in the morning, you can shoot it in the afternoon, you can shoot it in the night, you can shoot it when it rains. You can essentially do street photography 
any place, any time. There are no rules, which is why it's more important to make sure you already know the time of the day that you're going to be shooting at. Now, you could generally shoot at you know the golden hour, the sunrise time, and the time during the sunset, where everything is flat and everything is very well colored. There's a soft texture all around, and the sun has that glowy effect, which even though it's going away nowadays, it's still it's still here. So if you want to shoot at that time, your pictures will turn out a certain way. If you want to shoot when the sun is overhead and there's a lot of dynamic range, there's a lot of dis difference between the highlights and the shadows, everything's out of place. That is not going to work out because that is exactly what we encountered. So I started pretty early in the morning around 7 a.m. Started clicking pictures around 7 a.m. And by the time we uh, we finished most of the pictures around 12 p.m. Because after that, from between 12 to 3, the sun was an absolute mess, and there was no way you could you know find a good frame or at least click a good picture when the sun is overhead and the highlights and the shadows are just all over the place. Everything is blown out, and you don't really have a lot of gear to you know get in that sort of uh, frame during that time. For this, you can use ND filters and other types of ways you can overcome, but I would generally suggest to figure out a time that you want to shoot early in the morning if you want to go for that morning fresh look, and I think it works really well, as you guys can see with the pictures that we got. So yeah, pick your time of the day, make sure you're there on time, and uh, click the most amazing pictures ever. All right, guys, tip number four is something that I've seen a lot of people miss out. A lot of people don't really mention it. A lot of people might not even think about it. But as a filmmaker, as a learning filmmaker, I would suggest that before you do street photography, make sure you know the color palette of the place. Now, the color palette is nothing uh, but the number of colors that are going to be used in the, those pictures. So essentially what that means is that whenever you go to a place, there are a lot of predominant colors. You might see a lot of blues at a certain place, or you might see a lot of browns, a lot of earthy tones in a certain area of the city. Knowing these colors and knowing how you can edit them will help you in post-production as well because when you sit to edit these pictures, you'll already know what are the colors that are most dominant in the picture and how you have to manipulate them to get a certain, you know, effect, whether you want a moody picture, whether you want a sad photo, whether you want a very warm, happy picture. It all depends upon the colors and the way you manipulate them. And knowing the color palette of a place before you actually go really helps you, uh, you know, enhance your creative and find out, you know, different types of color combinations and stuff that you wouldn't have thought about if you did not have taken the color palette thing into consideration. So I would suggest scout your location a day before or you don't even have to a Google search is everything it takes to find out pictures of that place and you can see the predominant colors there and you know plan your edits as well as your shots accordingly. Now for this reason for this instance we got a lot of earthy tones a lot of uh, uh, you know yellows oranges and browns and because of that we ended up with a lot of moody pictures a lot of photos that really have a lot of yellow in them to make them uh, look that much more moody and cinematic. So yeah keep these things in mind and I'm sure your photos will turn out that much better. Last but definitely not the least is tip number five and right now we're talking about ethics and the fact that just because you're a street photographer does not mean you can invade someone else's privacy. Now a lot of photographers seem to forget this or they just don't think about it because you have a camera and technically you're allowed to shoot anything that's outside. That is not really the case when it comes to street photography especially in sensitive countries like India. So if you have a subject that you want to click a picture of all it takes is just a simple permission. All you need to do is go ahead and ask them if they're okay with taking a picture and you should be good to go. You know what? I'm gonna let a clip roll out right now and this is exactly what happened and you, you guys can see it for yourselves. Namaste, Andy. Andy, we're going to college here. You're going to take a photo. You're going to look very good. You're going to show me a photo. No, no, you're going to show me a photo. You're going to show me a photo. Take a photo? Okay, thank you, Andy. Andy, you're going to take a photo. You see how simple that was? All I had to do was ask that old lady and I got this wonderful shot of her sitting with the flowers with this amazing blue door background that we got which really enhanced the edit and made it that much more punchier. Respect people, respect people that do not wish to be clicked and uh, yeah, your, your photos will turn out that much better 
because you'll know that you wouldn't have hurt anyone sentiments or anything of that sort uh, when you're clicking a picture of them and well guys that is pretty much it for today's video if you guys did like it don't forget to drop a like subscribe to the channel let me know what was your favorite tip which was your favorite photo out of everything and uh, while you're here let me just talk about a cool video idea plan that I have I've got a lot of POV footage of the GoPro that you guys saw in certain instances in this video and I wanted to make a big montage of it like a 20 30 minute video where you see everything I did live when I was clicking these pictures with the edited results if you think that would be something interesting to watch let me know and I'll uh, see what I can do until then this is Anubhav signing out you guys have a great day and uh, yeah peace out Bye.